Hi, so my name's Lucy Slater and today I will be giving a short lesson on HCF and LCM. So first of all, let's go through the definitions. So HCF stands for highest common factor and LCM stands for lowest common multiple. So the highest common factor of two numbers will be a number that is a factor of both of the numbers and the highest possible one, which might sound confusing at first, but let's go through an example. So say we are asked to find the HCF of 18 and 6. We can list all of the factors of both the numbers. So factors of 18 would be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18. So we can just quickly recall that if something is a factor that means 18 is divisible by it. So 18 is divisible by all of these numbers and no others. I'll give you a few minutes to check that you can confirm that there's no more factors of 18. Perfect. And then we can write down the factors of 6, which would be 1, 2, 3, and 6. And we are asked for the highest common factor of 18 and 6. So we're looking for a number in both of the lists and the highest possible one. So we can see... 2 is in both, but it's not the highest. So the highest one would be 6. So the HCF of 18 and 6 is 6. Brilliant. So now we can go on to the LCM. The LCM is the lowest common multiple, which means we are looking for a number that will be at least as big as the biggest number of the pair possibly bigger, and it needs to be divisible by both of the numbers. So an easy way of finding a number that is divisible by both of the numbers would be by simply multiplying the numbers. However, that's not always going to be the lowest common multiple. If we have 18 and 6, we can work out 18 times 6 by using the um, short multiplication method, and we will get 108. However, that's not the smallest. The smallest would be 18. As 18 is divisible by 18, that gives a whole number. And 18 is divisible by 6, that gives a whole number. However, we need to find a method that will always ensure giving us the smallest. Here, you might have spotted it just by noticing that 18 is divisible by 6. But I think it's important to find a method that is foolproof. And that's how we get into, let me just delete this in seconds, sorry. And that is how we get into prime factor decomposition. So if we are given two numbers, let's say 36 and 60. And we are asked to find the prime factor decomposition of them. What that means is we want to write these numbers as a product of their primes. So let's start. We want a prime number that divides 36. So we could have two. And then 36 divided by two will give 18. A prime number that divides 18, we could have two again. 18 divided by two is nine. A prime that divides nine, we could have three. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And when we are left with a prime, that's when we stop. And then we can circle all of these. So that means 36 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And we know 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared, and 3 times 3 is the same as 3 squared. So therefore, 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. Let's do the same for 60. So, 2 is a prime that divides 60, and we're left with 30. 2 divides 30, and we're left with 15. 3 divides 15, and we're left with 5, which is a prime. So, therefore, we have 60 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared times three, times five. Perfect.
Now what we want to do is put them in a Venn diagram. So I'm going to draw two overlapping circles and I'm going to call this side 36 and this side 60. So let me just write this to make it a bit clearer. 36 equals 2 squared times 3 squared and 60 equals 2 squared times 3 times 5. Brilliant. So now I would ask you what factors do 36 and 60 both share? And we can tell that both 36 and 60 are divisible by 2 squared. So we're going to put that in the centre of the Venn diagram because this is factors that they share. Then we can cross that off. Um, and then 36, we're left with 3 squared. But 60 is also divisible by 3. So then we can use one of these 3s, use that 3, as that is also shared. And then 36, we're left with 1 3, which is not shared by the 60. So we'll put 3 here. And 60, we're left with a 5, which is not shared by the 36. So we will put a 5 there. Does that make sense? Or would you like me to go through another example of prime factor decomposition and put the numbers in the Venn diagram? For now, I will move on. But obviously, if I was talking to a real person, it would depend on their, <laughs> their response. Um, yeah, so now we have this Venn diagram. To find the highest common factor, we are going to we're going to we're not going to do that. To find the highest common factor, we are just going to multiply all the numbers that are in the middle section. So all the numbers in this section here, which is two squared times three which is going to be 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. And then the lowest common multiple is going to be all the numbers multiplied by each other. So we're going to do 3 times 2 squared times 3 times 5, which gives... So 3 times 2 squared is 3 times 4, which is 12, times 3, which is 36, times 5 which is 180 so therefore the highest common factor of 36 and 60 is 12 and the lowest common multiple of 36 and 60 is 180 had this been a real lesson i would then go through another example of working out the highest common factor in lcm and then i'd give some time for the student to go through some examples on her, on their own and see if they fully understand the concepts that i have described Thank you.